I'm Pastor Lily Cows. I'm one of the co-lead pastors here at Mattisville First United Methodist Church, and I'm thankful for Kennedy um, and Kate for sharing with us in Sacred Circle today. And again, parents, you can pick them up in room 222 after the service today. And thank you to those who are here in person. We know this stormy weather has been a little crazy this morning, and I'm thankful that you're here. And I know a lot of people have told us that they're joining us online today. So thankful for this opportunity to be the church that's here present and also that is gathered in our homes. And we do pray that God is with us and we know God's presence wherever we may be. We're talking about God's powerful presence, in fact, today, that God is powerfully present with us. Our scripture is from the prophet Isaiah, be reading from chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Let's hear now the word of God. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, I'm so thankful that you are a God who is with us. That in all the storms of life and all the craziness that life can bring, that you are a God who never leaves us, that you're with us through it all. Help us to see you today, to experience the power of your presence so that you can fill us to overflowing that we may give ourselves for others for the sake of you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Just last week, we celebrated Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit on God's people. And we celebrated how amazing things happen when the Spirit guides us and how we are to live our lives in worship of God. And inviting others to know that God loves them too. And today, as we do every week, we're continuing to worship God. And we're also going to explore together over the next few weeks who God is and how we experience God in our lives. And so today we begin by naming the truth that God is powerfully present with us. God takes up space in our world and in our lives and we can experience God's presence with us. The prophet Isaiah knew how powerfully present God was. And in this vision of God uh, recounted to us in scripture, Isaiah finds himself in the overwhelming presence of the Lord. He experiences the enduring, full, all-consuming presence of God that, yes, overwhelmed him, but also propelled him to respond to God's call on his life. This passage from Isaiah is one of the most loved and well-known passages from this very, very large book of the Bible. These eight verses are probably some of the most popular verses from it. And mainly because of that verse 8, when Isaiah, when God calls Isaiah saying, who will go for us? And Isaiah's like, me, here am I, send me. 
Now, this is a phrase that I would love for everyone in the church to memorize and be able to recite at a moment's notice. I think it's an important one, especially when there's some stuff to be done around here that you're ready to say yes to that. And not say that partly because you all are actually already really good at saying that. And God does amazing things because of your willingness to serve. So I'm actually not going to focus a lot on that verse today, mainly because we like to jump to that verse really quickly because we like that one. Here am I, send me. We like to say that and to think that that's us responding to God. But if we're not careful, we miss those other parts of this scripture, the, even the reason why Isaiah responded. And it was because he was overcome by the powerful presence of God that he experienced. The scripture starts by placing Isaiah's experience in the time frame of the same year of the death of an earthly king, King Uzziah. And of course, this fact allows us to place Isaiah's vision in a very specific time of history. We can look back and see what year did King Uzziah die? Oh, okay, so this is the year that Isaiah experienced this vision. But actually, too, there's another thing that we can uncover by seeing that in the very same sentence that the death of an earthly king is named, Isaiah sees another king seated on a throne that's living, a living Lord seated on the throne. And it reveals this truth of the transitory nature of earthly kings in contrast to the eternal kingship of God. Even though King Uzziah had died, the Lord was still seated on the throne. God is eternal, and human beings are not. God's reign is everlasting, while the leadership of humans, whether they be kings or queens or presidents, prime ministers, politicians, it's limited by the finiteness of life. This Memorial Day weekend serves as a reminder of how fleeting and fragile life can be. As we remember those who've died in service to their country and we decorate their graves even to honor them, we're reminded that life is both precious and limited by time. And sometimes that the time we have is much shorter than we thought it should be or that we want it to be, even for those who nobly serve and give themselves for something that's bigger than themselves. And the reality of life is that people do come and go from our lives. Their presence is with us for a time, and for many of us, we have precious memories of people who, you know, have loved us and whom we have loved. And we have even maybe served alongside of, but they're no longer with us now. But the Lord, the Lord is an enduring presence in our lives. Though others pass away, God will never pass away. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and in all the many changes and the ups and downs of life and everything that even comes between all of that, God is there. This is one of the reasons why God's presence is so powerful, because it doesn't stop. It doesn't go away. God never leaves or forsakes us, a presence that we can always count on. It's an enduring presence that's meant to take up space in our lives. Recently, John and I had to take the kids to a church meeting that was bookended by worship and reflection on God's word. And during the scriptural reflection, our youngest daughter decided she would like to draw a picture. And so she started drawing this picture. And I thought, oh, look, so I snapped a photo because I loved it. It's the cross and you can see the flowers on it. And just, I just thought that's really sweet of her to be drawing a cross. And then not much later, I looked down again, and this is what the picture looked like. <laughs> that escalated pretty quickly, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It is kind of overwhelming if you think about it, because there's no space left on the paper 
because it is so filled with crosses and hearts and flowers. And it became obvious to me that she was moved by something she was hearing or she was reflecting on that made her just want to fill up the space on this paper, as much of it as she could, with symbols of love and God's love for us. In fact, there is room for little else. In Isaiah's vision, he finds himself in the very throne room of God. God's robe filling the temple. Otherworldly, heavenly beings flying around and singing about God's holiness that fills the whole earth with God's glory. The very foundation shaking and the house being filled with smoke as they sang praise to God. This is an awesome and it's an all-encompassing vision. God's presence was filling the space And when confronted with God's presence, Isaiah responds in awe and fear because of his own sin and his own inadequacies that were taking up space in his life. With such an enduring, all-encompassing, all-powerful presence, how could there be room for anything else? Well, there isn't. But we sure do try to push it away and live like it doesn't exist or that we can fit God into a box in our lives that God's okay here, but it doesn't, God doesn't take up space over here. We like to leave God out of certain places in our lives. And Isaiah, he saw this. He saw this so clearly about himself and he cried out knowing he was lost. Because in the face of such holiness, his humanness, it showed forth so clearly. And he knew that the way he lived his life and the way people he lived among lived their lives, it wasn't in a way that acknowledged this enduring, powerful presence of God. Compared to God's holiness, they were filthy. But They could pretend as if everything was okay if they really wanted to. But Isaiah couldn't pretend anymore. He couldn't. Because he was confronted with the reality of God's presence. And he realized there wasn't space for both. There isn't space for our sinful selves in the presence of God. And thankfully God knows this. And he already had a response for Isaiah, and he already knows this about us, too. And out of great love for us, desires to be the enduring, powerful presence in our lives that we need. And so God cleanses us, releases us from guilt, pushes away everything that should not be filling us up, but we let anyways. He pushes all that aside, and we let it so that we can have the capacity to receive God's presence in our lives. Liken it to replacing an old piece of furniture. In order to make space for the new, you have to clear out the old. There isn't space for two tables in the exact same spot that you have the old one. There's just not. And if you try, well, it just kind of gets weird. (laughs) trying to put two tables on top of each other. But if we get rid of the old piece of furniture, we have space to receive the new one. And because it's not hindered by the old piece of furniture, you can use the new piece in the way that it was created and developed and made to be used. When we let God clear up and clean out our lives from the things that we try to fill it with, and then replace that space with God's powerful presence, then we find ourselves living our lives in such a way that we were always intended to live. The old has gone, the new has come. And this new, it's everything we ever needed. When God's presence fills our lives, there's no room for sin, there's no room for uncleanliness, there's no room for anything but God. 
and God's purposes for our lives. God's holiness and glory fills us just like it fills the whole earth. And we are to reflect this holiness and glory to the world around us so that others can see that, yes, the whole earth is full of God's glory. It's only when Isaiah comes to experience the very real presence of God and to know this presence in his life that he was able to respond to God's call to go. Here I am, send me, is a response to God's presence. Where, God, where through forgiveness of Isaiah's sins, God takes up space in Isaiah's life that God was always meant to have, which means that Isaiah has the capacity and the desire to respond to God's call on his life. For Isaiah had learned that in God we live and we move and we have our being. And his life was not to be lived for himself, but for God. Believing and trusting in God's enduring and powerful presence in our lives means that we will cultivate an awareness of God's presence that is already all around us. It means that we will let God's presence take up space in our lives, take up all the space in our lives, the space that God deserves and has to have. It means that we live our lives in such a way that it points others towards God, reflecting God's holiness and glory to others and helping them to see the God who's ever present around them, who's already there and wants to take up space in their lives too. God is powerfully present and endures throughout all the ups and downs of life, how do we let God be powerfully present in our lives and reflect this truth to others? How do you? I know that God wants to be powerfully present in your life because God is faithful and is so loving and desires all to come to know him. God will never leave or forsake you. I have experienced God's presence in this church through worship and study and coming to the table in prayer and in being with other believers. And I believe that God is powerfully present. And I want for, for each of you and myself included to reflect this presence of God to others. And just like this picture, it's going to come back up, we're to live our lives in such a way that there's literally no more space for anything else but God and God's love. There's no more space. God is powerfully present forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. If we believe it, then let's be willing to show it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Dear Lord, I am so thankful that you are powerfully present with us. That indeed, in all times and in all places, you are God. And we trust that you are with us even now, showing us what it means to follow you, to love you. Help us to clear out what out of our lives what takes up space that is not of you, that we cling on to so that you can fully take over that which is rightfully yours, because we are your children, beloved by you. 
and you are calling us to your good works. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.